welcome you all on this NPTEL online certification course on mechatronics. Today I am going to talk about the sensors, we are starting with the sensors and first we will take up the displacement, position and proximity sensors. I intend to complete uh, uh, these uh, sensors uh, in two uh, lectures. A very uh, important sensors from the mechatronic point of view. Okay. So, uh, we will spend some time uh, in this section. So, uh, coming to displacement, position and proximity sensors, first of all let us see what is the difference between the displacement, position and proximity. Displacement, uh, if it uh, talk in terms of defining it, it basically measures amount by which the object has moved okay. and position is basically uh, uh, it gives uh, the position of some object uh, when it is described with respect to some reference point okay. uh, that is what we call it as the uh, position and proximity basically gives you the nearness or farness. Okay, that is it tells whether object has moved within some particular distance or not. Okay. So, all these three are related with the movement basically. Okay. So, this lecture and next lecture we are going to devote uh, the various uh, uh, sensors uh, which can measure uh, these three. Uh, there are many such sensor, uh, sensors which are available in the market and which are used uh, for this purpose. Uh, for for um, simplest one is the potentiometer type, then we have the strain gauge element, uh, we have capacitive element, differential transformer or what we call it as uh, LVDT, then we have the eddy current proximity sensors, inductive proximity switches optical encoders, uh, pneumatic sensors, proximity switches and Hall effect sensors. So, these are the some of the sensors which uh, are used for displacement position as well as uh, proxim in pro proximity measurement. Now, uh, which sensor to select? So, uh, there uh, has to be certain selection criteria for that and uh, uh, there are number of static and dynamic factors uh, uh, which must be considered uh, while selecting a suitable sensor to measure uh, the uh, 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 desired physical parameters. Uh, these are some of the typical factors what range you want, what resolution you want, what accuracy you are interested in uh, and what precision you want that is uh, uh, ability to uh, reproduce repeatedly uh, uh, with a given accuracy, what sensitivity you want. Okay. So, uh, these are the factor then uh, we talk about linearity percentage of deviation from the best fit linear calibration curve uh, how much uh, we are allowing for that, what should be the response time for your sensor, uh, what, uh, what should be the bandwidth that is frequency at which the output magnitude uh, drops by 3 dB. So, what should be the bandwidth of your sensor and uh, what, uh, uh, what about the resonance okay, that is the frequency at which uh, output magnitude peak occurs. So, these are some of the factors which we uh, take into consideration while selecting the sensors. Uh, uh, what are the operating range that is the uh, range uh, in which the sensor performs as specified. Then uh, what is uh, the, uh, the dead band that is the range of input for which there uh, is no output. Uh, some of the uh, definitions of these uh, definitions we have already uh, seen uh, uh, in uh, uh, my uh, previous uh, lecture. And what is the signal to noise ratio that is the ratio between the magnitude of signal and the uh, noise at the output. So, these are our uh, some of the requirement based on which we can select a particular type of uh, 
sensor. Okay. So, let us begin with uh, the uh, basic simplest one the, that is the potentiometer and uh, the potentiometer is a, a displacement measuring device okay. uh, that is it gives the displacement and uh, it is a basically uh, a variable resistance device uh, whose output resistance changes as the wiper uh, connected to the moving objects moves across um, a resistive surface. And we can use uh, the uh, potentiometer either for linear or for rotary displacement measurement. And uh, here basically uh, uh, as a measurable parameter uh, the displacement is converted uh, into a potential difference. So, uh, here uh, is a figure uh, which uh, we can look at basically uh, there are 3 terminals in it. Uh, okay. uh, we apply a constant input voltage between the terminal 1 and terminal 3. Uh, so, this is the terminal 1 and th terminal 3 uh, between which we apply a, 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 a constant input voltage and output voltage is taken uh, between terminal 2 and terminal uh, uh, 3 here. So, from here we take the output and from here we have the uh, uh, we uh, give the input and this figure is what uh, uh, we can see in the market it is a commercially available uh, version. Uh, uh, there is a knob basically uh, 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 which is rotated and here are the 3 uh, terminals which I uh, talked uh, over uh, here okay. and this uh, potentiometer uh, we can uh, used for say the uh, angular uh, position uh, uh, angular displacement measurement. Now, uh, to understand the principle of uh, uh, the uh, measurement, uh, let us look at this figure and in this figure we can see that we have a variable resistance. So, uh, we can say that uh, say here are the 3 uh, terminals that is terminal 1, terminal 3 and the terminal 2 uh, is on the wiper uh, which is moving and uh, say we apply a input voltage V i here and here is the output voltage V o and this RL is the uh, resistance for the uh, voltmeter. Now, here we see that if my x is 0 over here, then at that position this R1 value will be the maximum one. So, at x is equal to 0, this is maximum, R1 is maximum and R2 is going to be uh, 0 in this case. And when x is maximum that is your x is up to here, in this position your R2 is going to be maximum and R1 is going to be 0. So, this uh, description I can give uh, by a mathematical relationship say R1 is equal to 1 minus x by x max r max and r2 is equal to x by x max r max so here we can see that if i put x is equal to 0 uh, uh, this is uh, what we get we get r1 is equal to r max and r2 is equal to 0 so my first condition is satisfied and um, if i put x is equal to x max here i get r2 uh, is equal to uh, r max and r1 is equal to 0 so this equation basically satisfied our uh, these two uh, criteria which I uh, talk to you. Now, uh, if I uh, uh, write uh, say uh, the Kirchhoff's law over here, then I can write that is Vi minus Vo is equal to Ir1 where I is the current from here. So, I can find out I as Vi minus Vo by uh, R1. Similarly, uh, the Vo I can write as Ir2 that is voltage across between 2 and 3. So, this is Ir2 and I substitute this value I over here. So, I get Vi minus Vo by R1 uh, into R2 or I can uh, simplify this equation and write Vo in terms of uh, Vi uh, and there is a fraction over here okay, and uh, uh, that is R2 by R1 plus R2 and R1 plus R2 we know that this is the maximum value of R which we are going to have. So, this is R2 by R max uh, times Vi and uh, we have um, 
uh, we know uh, R2 by R max uh, from the uh, previous slide R2 by R max is basically x by x max. Okay. So, this I can write R2 by R max as x by x max times V i here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that is there and uh, from here I can write V o uh, as V i by x max into x. So, we can see that the output voltage here it is directly proportional to x okay and this is how uh, we we basically by measuring the vo we are able to measure the x so we can calibrate uh, the x uh, in terms of the vo and this is how we measure the uh, uh, displacement same uh, principle applies uh, for a rotary potentiometer Next uh, 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 element uh, sensor I will talk about is strain gauge. Okay. Uh, uh, we come across uh, um, many types of strain gauges uh, um, uh, in uh, our uh, laboratories and the electrical strain gauge uh, as the name indicates um, uh, basically it measures strain and it could be either a metallic wire or a metal foil strip or a strip of semiconductor material which can be pasted on a surface basically. Okay. And uh, when subjected to strain basically uh, its resistance changes or changes. Okay. So, the fraction uh, 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 change in resistance that is delta by r is proportional to the strain. So, this is a uh, basic principle of it. So, delta by r is equal to g times uh, uh, strain where g is a constant of proportionality which we called as the gauge factor. Okay. So, uh, this is g uh, times strain. So, this is basically your uh, g times uh, 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 strain I can write as delta L by L. Okay. So, basically we can see that uh, this is uh, 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 nothing but this is g times your um, change in length divided by the original length. So, we can see that basically that the change in length is uh, or the uh, resistance is pro uh, change in resistance is proportional to the change in length. Uh, so, this is the basic principle for uh, the uh, strain gauge. Now, G uh, uh, for metal or wire foil strain gauges uh, uh, is about uh, 2 uh, whereas, G for silicon uh, P type semiconductor strain gauge is about plus 100 and for N type silicon uh, semiconductor strain gauge uh, G value is uh, uh, around minus 100 and this G value is usually satisfy uh, supplied sorry uh, supplied by the manufacturer. Now, the disadvantage of strain gauges is that the uh, resistance changes not only because of the strain, but also with the temperature. Okay. So, we have to take care of this factor, uh, uh, um, uh, we have to keep this factor always in mind okay. and we have to work on something to uh, uh, eliminate uh, this change in uh, strain because of the temperature or change in resistance because of the uh, uh, temperature. So, uh, uh, this is the commercially available form of the um, uh, strain gauge. Uh, we can see that there are uh, solder tab basically here and we have the grid here and uh, the uh, here uh, there are alignment marks as you can see 1, 2, 3 and 4 and basically these alignment marks are used to fix it up uh, here uh, in a surface. So, you can see that with the help of these alignment mark we can fix it on a surface properly and uh, from here uh, we can uh, connect the uh, two leads okay. and this is the surface uh, for which uh, you want to measure the uh, strain or uh, say uh, displacement. And uh, this is the basically uh, commercially uh, available form for the uh, semiconductor type of strain gauge. Here basically uh, uh, this is the semiconductor basically. Okay. So, this is our semiconductor and uh, we can see here in the sketch and uh, uh, th there are gold leads basically there is a base and there are uh, electrodes over here from where it can be connected. Okay. So, uh, this is the commercially available form of the semiconductor uh, type strain gauges. 
Now, how these strain gauges are used basically? Okay, uh, so strain gauges are put at the top and bottom portion of say a cantilever beam. Uh, there is a strain gauge one at the top, a strain gauge two uh, uh, at the bottom, and uh, here uh, we have the test specimen. And uh, uh, in the undeflected beam position, uh, uh, these strain gauges, when connected to the arms of a Wheatstone bridge. Uh, the circuit uh, uh, cause uh, bridge to be balanced with no reading in the uh, galvanometer over uh, here. Okay, and uh, if suppose we apply a, say a certain moment over here, or we apply certain uh, uh, load uh, over here. Okay. Uh, either po, uh, uh, your uh, pure moment or pure bending load, it is uh, applied at the cantilever causing the uh, beam uh, uh, to be subjected to a strain, uh, then uh, we are going to have uh, uh, their stretching, stretching at the top one uh, top strain gauge and uh, uh, compression on the bottom strain gauge. Basically, so here we can see that this strain for this increases and uh, strain for the bottom one decreases, and uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, deflection in the galvanometer over here. And uh, then uh, we can uh, by varying the uh, magnitude of this R3 and R4, basically, uh, uh, we can find out. Uh, uh, we can find out uh, by what amount the resistance change has taken place. Okay, so uh, basically uh, here. Uh, 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 for the wheat stone bridge, we know R1 by R2 will be basically R3 by R4, and at the null position, actually R3 and R4 are equal basically. So, R, so uh, in uh, this new position, basically this R3 and R4 will be R plus delta R because for the top one uh, there is a increase in resistance, and for the bottom one uh, we have R minus delta R because there is going to be a decrease in uh, uh, the resistance. So, from here, basically basically we can find out what is the strain that is the delta by r uh, we can find out and this in turn gives us uh, how much is the uh, uh, displacement okay so this is the way uh, it is actually uh, done next uh, let us look at uh, the capacitive type of elements uh, uh, which are used uh, uh, to measure the uh, displacement okay so uh, basically we know uh, 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 we studied in our uh, high school or higher secondary school uh, the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor basically this is given by c is equal to epsilon r epsilon 0 a by d where this epsilon r is relative permittiv uh, permittivity of the dielectric between the plates uh, here and uh, say uh, epsilon naught is a constant uh, called permittivity of the free space and A is the area of overlap between the plates and D is the plate separation. So, as you can see here there are uh, three factors that are responsible uh, for the uh, change of capacitance and these factors are basically uh, say uh, uh, either the dielectric medium or uh, your area of overlap or uh, your uh, the plate separation. Okay. So, uh, here um, uh, 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 let us consider here uh, the first uh, say a case where uh, we change the capacitance by changing the D. So, uh, if uh, say this is the parallel plate capacitor with the two plates, uh, if we change the D here, so this is how if I move, move this plate uh, in this direction. Uh, we are going to change this value of D. So, I am going to change the value of C or uh, the second case could be I move this plate say in this direction and if I am moving this uh, plate in this direction, then uh, there is a overlapping area which is uh, going to change and my capacitance is going to change or I can change uh, the uh, I can give the motion to the di dielectric material and I can change the E R value okay? and this way uh, I can uh, uh, measure the C basically. Okay. So, uh, uh, we can see that in either of the three cases there is a motion involved. Okay. So, uh, 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 this motion uh, 
could be calibrated in terms of the capacitance. Now, uh, to uh, implement it practically, uh, 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 what an arrangement uh, which is used what we call it as a push pull type of uh, uh, displacement sensor, where uh, in fact there are three plates okay, and uh, the middle plate if we are moving then um, uh, basically the uh, capacitance between the first and middle plate is given by this one. So, uh, say um, uh, if uh, the uh, distance is uh, say uh, d between initially uh, at the center position if the displacement is d between um, uh, both of them. So, basically uh, 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 this is say uh, d initially and uh, this is also d initially. Now, if I am moving this say center plate uh, by an amount x, then capacitance C1 will be um, uh, here epsilon uh, r epsilon 0 a by d plus x and for the C, uh, second one basically we will be having d minus x term here. Okay. And C1 um, um, can be made uh, in one arm of an AC bridge and similarly C2 in the other, then the resulting out of balance voltage is basically uh, proportional to x and this is how we can measure the x uh, uh, directly. With the help of two plate uh, 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 capacitor if you try to measure the x then we will see that there is a non-linear relationship uh, coming. Uh, and. Uh, um, uh, that creates uh, some problem for us. So, uh, this arrangement uh, the push pull type is used uh, where uh, we have a linear relationship. <coughs> this is the commercially available form uh, of the uh, capacitive sensor uh, which is available in the market. Next, uh, let us look at the linear variable differential transformer, uh, another uh, very important uh, 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 displacement sensor okay. uh, and the in short it is called as LVDT and uh, uh, this is used for measuring the linear displacement and this basically consists of uh, say a primary uh, coil and uh, there is a secondary coil and um, uh, there is a core basically movable iron core um, uh, in between and its working principle is similar to that of the transformer okay, where voltage are induced in the secondary coil uh, in response to the excitation in the primary coil. So, uh, uh, this LVDT must be excited by AC signal to induce an AC response in the secondary and the core position can be determined by measuring the secondary response. Okay. And when the uh, two secondary coil are connected in the series in the opposing configuration as we can see here uh, this is uh, uh, that is uh, plus minus here and then you have minus here and plus here this configuration is what is uh, called as the opposing configuration and uh, um, in this configuration basically uh, we can see that uh, uh, when uh, the core is there in a centrally uh, position okay and uh, 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 it is there in a centrally position and uh, by uh, uh, moving from the center basically um, uh, we can uh, see the response uh, uh, that is the output one. Okay. So, uh, uh, if uh, this is the excitation voltage say V i output voltage with core left to the null is this one uh, we can see that and output voltage with core uh, right of the null uh, is uh, actually uh, this one. Okay. So, this is how uh, it can be uh, 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 seen. So, uh, there is a mood point in the core position uh, where the voltage induced in each coil um, uh, is uh, same uh, amplitude and 180 degree out of phase basically and producing a uh, null uh, output. Okay. So, this is how uh, we um, uh, identify that uh, uh, null position and then with respect to that null position we can see whether uh, the core is moving towards left or it is moving towards the uh, right. Okay. And um, as the core moves from the null position, the output amplitude uh, increases here we can see that linearly uh, 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 whether we are going towards right or we are going towards uh, left, uh, there is a linear range basically after which it becomes non-linear. So, basically we have to operate it in this linear uh, range only. 
ok. So, this we have to uh, ensure and by measuring basically the output voltage we can see by what amount uh, the core has got displaced ok. So, uh, this is the uh, basic principle for this and uh, further uh, this voltage uh, uh, we can make uh, uh, unidirectional basically ok, um, uh, unidirectional uh, uh, by uh, uh, using a uh, say uh, bridge circuit ok. I have already discussed this bridge circuit uh, during uh, the semiconductor uh, electronics uh, 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 topic when I was discussing uh, in it ok. And so, the diode bridges in the circuit produce a positive or negative uh, rectified sine wave basically depending on which side of the null position the core is uh, located. So, uh, it is either all positive side or it is all the negative side. So, uh, this way basically uh, we can measure uh, the uh, linear displacement. And this is the commercially available form uh, of the uh, uh, LVDT which is available in the uh, market. Next uh, let us look at the optical encoders another very uh, important uh, device uh, to measure the linear and angular displacement ok. Uh, so, in this lecture I uh, will be considering uh, 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 one type of an, uh, optical encoder and uh, in my consecutive lecture I will be taking the uh, another uh, type that is the absolute one ok. So, uh, an encoder is a device that converts a linear or angular displacement into the basically sequence of pulses and we uh, can count these pulses basically ok and uh, by counting these pulses we can obtain the linear or angular displacements ok. And uh, as I said they come basically in two forms uh, one is the incremental encoder and another is the absolute encoder ok. Uh, the incremental encoders gives the rotation with respect to some reference position whereas, the absolute encoder they gives the actual uh, uh, position. Uh, here basically we can see the is, uh, schematic diagram for the uh, uh, incremental encoder basically we have a, a slotted disk here. Uh, the, the slotted disk is there uh, in the one side of the disk uh, there is a uh, light emitting diode basically and um, uh, at the other side we have a photo register basically ok. So, a beam of light from LED passes through the slot in a disk the beam of light is detected by a light sensor use, uh, usually the photo register placed at the other side of the disk ok. And when the disk rotates the pulse output is produced by the photo register. Now, how many number of pulses are received by the photo register that is uh, proportional to the angle through which the disk has rotated. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, there are three concentric disc basically there is a inner disc uh, uh, there uh, that is the inner track, there is a middle track and there is a outer track ok. Uh, so, uh, 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 there are concentric track as I said uh, the, the three sensors are used in uh, incremental encoder and uh, the, the, uh, this uh, uh, delta uh, is the angle subtended by each hole ok. So, there is a um, uh, basically for referencing purpose there is a inner track has one hole and it locates the home position of the disk ok. And the middle and outer track have equally a spaced hole around the periphery of the disk as we can see over here and holes in the middle track are at an offset equal to half of the width of the hole in comparison to the outer track. So, there is a offset basically and this offset actually helps us in uh, uh, sensing the direction basically ok. So, if the shaft rotates in clockwise direction then the pulses in the outer track lead those in the middle one. Uh, whereas, if the shaft rotate in the anti clockwise direction then pulses uh, in the outer track lag those of the middle wall. And as I, I told you earlier basically this uh, tells us uh, uh, in which direction it is rotating basically whether it is rotating in the clockwise or it is rotating in the anti clockwise uh, direction ok. So, uh, these are the references uh, which uh, you can uh, use uh, 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 mechatronics by Bolton. Then 
Italian uh, uh, mechatronics by Alciator and Michel uh, and also there is our own book uh, uh, on intelligent mechatronic system which you can refer for further reading. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, in next uh, video, I will be talking about the absolute encoder as well as uh, we will be seeing some of the proximity sensors also. Thank you.